Okay, so first of all, <clears throat> what is the advantage of this module? What can an engineer, uh, what kind of gain can get from this module? I presented here um, different types of structures uh, which share the same property in the sense that they have not typical geometry, they have not regular geometry in the sense that in standards usually you can find uh, pressure coefficients uh, for these type of structures. So if someone would like to calculate the wind load on these uh, type of, uh, of buildings, it is really hard to, to define them. So the main goal of this module is to help the engineer to take into account uh, the wind load for a not too regular uh, building, which is in this case what I showed here is a tensile membrane uh, structure um, and different type of uh, roof structures. So let's speak about the characteristics of the module. So the goal of this module is to cooperate with an external CFD program and adapt uh, the flow simulation. So we would like to take into account the result of these CFD simulations. So we would like to import the pressure field on our structure. And the CFD interface module is an add-on module that is recommended when the engineer like, would like to design a structure with not too typical uh, geometrical properties. Okay, so what are the characteristics of this module? It is recommended uh, for structures with irregular geometry. Uh, right now in the first re uh, release, uh, only static pressure loads can be taken into account, but we would like to uh, develop uh, in this field. So we assume that the pressures are the constant functions of time, which uh, usually in CFD analysis means that we have a steady state flow. So mm, the pressure values are constant and not a function of, of time. And with this CFD uh, module, we can interpolate these pressure values uh, from the CFD simulations on the contour of the surface elements of the structure. I will speak about it later on. So till now in the first release, we only deal with surface elements, but later on we are going to um, deal with beam structures also. Uh, and uh, what is probably pretty useful that it is sufficient to specify only the spatial coordinates of the measurements. So we don't need the mesh, the uh, CFD mesh uh, from the uh, third party program we need only the spatial coordinates of the uh, of the vertices or nodes um, and the corresponding pressure values of course okay and just briefly i would like to speak about the theoretical background so after we imported these nodes these vertices we couple them with the, with the faces of the surface element uh, as I presented here, we only take into account these two uh, faces which are presented here with uh, green. The edges are not taken into account. We assume that these are three thin uh, regions, so the pressures at the edges can be neglected. And these faces are divided by a triangular mesh. And on these triangular meshes, we assume that the function of the pressure is a constant function of, of space which is um, of course not true, but uh, uh, so the real distribution of pressure is not linear uh, usually, or always, uh, but we take into account this non-linear pressure distribution as many, many linear uh, pressure distributions at the same time. So what we need to find here is three, uh, the magnitude of the three uh, pressure values, P1, P2, and P3. So these are the three unknowns and the three uh, uh, known quantities are the resultant force, which is denoted by F, and the two bending moments with respect to axis Z and axis Y. Okay, so we would like to ensure that the linear, linearized pressure field has the same 
magnitude of so the resultant is the same and the point of action is the same for the linearized pressure and the real pressure uh, on this triangular here we used uh, so-called gaussian quadrature uh, for which we need the, the weights at different uh, points and we need the uh, determinant of the jacobian at different points and uh, what is interesting here is how can we calculate the pressure at the jacobian node and uh, sorry at the gaussian node uh, and for this purpose we use the meshless weighted least square method and this is why we don't need the mesh from the cfd uh, program okay so we have three equations we can write it in a shorthanded form uh, here so we have a three by three uh, matrix of coefficients and if we are lucky enough we can solve it and we have a unique uh, p1 p2 and p3 pressure sorry pressure values uh, and it happens if if the area of this triangle is is not non-zero okay so we can calculate these uh, pressure values uh, what are the limitations of this uh, module First of all, in the first release, we only deal with load panels and domains. The beams and ribs uh, will be implemented in the second release. In the point two, I would like to highlight that only steady state flow can be considered. So if one would like to take into account the dynamic effect of turbulence or von Karman vortex shedding, uh, it can be done in the second release uh, in which we would like to extend the knowledge of this module to 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 it 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 will be um, it will be good for for dynamic problems and uh, at last but not the least the interaction between the flow and the deformed structure cannot be taken into account uh, which means that in this case uh, the engineer needs a so-called fluid structure interaction so aeroelastic instability uh, is not available uh, with this module. Okay, so in this case, we need an interface which uh, couples the velocity field of the flow at the boundary of the between the structure and the and the and the flow to ensure that the velocity field is the same at the boundary uh, uh, of the structure and the and then the flow. Okay, so in this case, we need a fluid structure interaction. Uh, Okay, what I did not do here is that there was some animation. Okay, so in point two, we can see uh, Karman vortex shedding. So this is the effect which can have a large dynamical effect if uh, if the vortex is, has the vortex shedding has the same frequency as the eigenfrequency of the, of the structure. This happened nowadays in China. Um, so in this case, we will have a resonance, and uh, it is very dangerous phenomenon. And in the third point, we can see uh, flutter analysis of uh, Hungarian bridges um, cross section. So it is an aerodynamic instability, um, just for the sake of interest. Okay, so in the next, I would like to show you an example. Uh, if I will find it, okay. And I hope that you can hear me. Okay, so uh, I prepared a little example, which is a saddle roof structure. So what is interesting about this structure is that uh, in standards, we can find uh, the pressure coefficients for this type of structure. So it has a negative Gaussian uh, curvature, probably everyone knows these type of roof structures it is a very simple example but even this type of geometry or this type of geometry we can find pressure coefficients uh, the first task for us is to export the geometry when we export the geometry we use an stl uh, file and we choose the radio button model for cfd it is important because uh, if you choose this radio button uh, this is how we can ensure the load panel uh, also will be exported during the 
the procedure. And uh, what is also important that we can export the geometry as a structural analysis model. In this case, the gap between different regions are uh, uh, not handled, which is uh, somewhat of a problematic thing in a CFD program during meshing. Uh, this is why we implemented an architectural model in which these gaps are vanished uh, um, between the connections of the, of the regions. So the next step is to calculate the pressure field around the structure, uh, which here I would like to emphasize that it is very important that uh, uh, for such a problem, uh, usually wind engineers and mechanical engineers are familiar with such, such problems. So as far as I know from the university, an everyday civil engineer general uh, education does not contain such material like uh, turbulence models, which is very important during this calculation. So in a CFD calculation, usually mechanical engineers are familiar with such turbulence models as uh, Reynolds averaging uh, Navier-Stokes equations or K-Epsilon or K-Sigma model. Okay, so usually this analysis is carried out by uh, a wind engine. What I used here is uh, a free software, which is called as OpenFOAM. OpenFOAM is a Linux-based uh, software, so something for something. We have a large block around the structure. This large block uh, represents the airflow around the structure. The blue boundary condition was the inlet flow, uh, inlet velocity velocity inlet boundary condition. The opposite face was the pressure outlet and the all four other faces are the wall boundary conditions. And uh, what uh, I would like to show here is the streamlines uh, around the structure. So in the blue face, it is the inlet boundary condition. We assume that the inlet velocity is 25 meters per second. And it is a constant function of place and time, so it is a uh, constant on the space. And on the opposite end, we assume that the pressure is zero, so we have the equilibrium pressure uh, on the other end. And what we can see here is that red denotes the inlet velocity, and around the structure, we can see that uh, the velocity decreased significantly. Um, and probably let's say that this model is not the best because uh, we should define such a large block at which the boundary, the velocity field of the boundary is undisturbed. And in this case, it is not really true, but it is just for just for the sake of, uh, of interest. So it is just an, an example. What we are interested in is the pressure field around the structure. So I would like to plot the pressure field and we would like to export this pressure field from the open form. Here, what is important is that in a CFD calculation, positive values are pressures and negative is suction. So here, what we can see is that at this edge, the positive value is pressure and the blue domains are under suction. Okay, and the task is to export this pressure field. Um, it is even from open form or ANSYS Fluent, ANSYS CFD, it is very common that uh, we can uh, define the boundary and at this boundary we can export the pressure field. The result of this, uh, this export is this file. In the first column, you can see the pressure so the next three columns are the x, y, and z directional velocities, which is zero because I assume that the the boundary around the structure is uh, uh, there is no slip uh, around the structure, so the particles have zero velocity around the structure, which is a rough approximation because 
it really depends on the roughness of the of the structure's surface. What I showed previously, I would like to get back, but probably it's not possible, that in axis VM, So, sorry, so in axis VM, we need the free coordinates of the points and we need the pressure value. So we need these four uh, values. Okay, next step is the solution. So after we carried out the CFD analysis, we can import the pressure field in our model at the load step after clicking on the gener on the generating min load button. We can browse the file of the pressure values and we must uh, define the unit of pressure values, which is in this case is Pascal. And after clicking on open button, it will interpolate the pressure field on our structure. And after the interpolation, we can see a warning. In this warning, we can, sorry for, it is in Hungarian, but we can see that uh, we interpolated uh, uh, 30,000 points. And from these 30,000 points, the, those points which were not cap coupled or paired with the, with the face was 4,000. Okay, so these nodes were lying on an edge of, uh, of this uh, structure. So this is why not all the nodes were uh, paired pressure values from the CFD analysis. Uh, I would like to highlight that the the direction of the wind is x, so the the the, the wind is x directional. So in this uh, down in this uh, left side, we can see that we have significant pressure uh, on our structure. And after this, um, it is very similar to any kind of uh, axis VM load case. First, we distribute a load. And what I would like to highlight here is that we could see that uh, there were, there were uh, loads which overlapped, which is a perfectly normal phenomenon, as I quoted from the HBO uh, series, uh, because um, we have two meshes, uh, one mesh on the upper, surface and one mesh on the uh, on the lower surface of the of the domains so these surfaces these meshes overlap each other so it is not a problem here and after the calculation we can see the deformation and the deformed shape due to an x directional uh, wind load which is very similar to to what we can do in any other type of loads. Okay, so this was the deformed shape from an x-directional uh, wind load. Okay, and that was all. If uh, you have any question, feel free to ask. I will try my best to answer them.